Wetpicks Wet Pixel Live. My name's Adam Hanlon. I'm the publisher of Wet Pixel, and I'd like to introduce you to our expert in all things underwater, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to be here. Um, I thought I'd spin things around on you today, and before you get a chance to ask me a question, I thought I'd I'd get revenge for you making <laughs> me show you all my gear last time, and ask you to tell me about your current underwater photography gear, at least the main stuff. So, yeah, so I was shooting on um, Monday in a slightly different environment. So um, in the UK, so we're somewhat limited as to where we can go and what we can, where we can dive still um, due to the, the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And um, we have, um, so locally, we have an area that has some slate mines and within these slate mines, there's a series of tunnels. And um, so we went up there and the idea really is to, was to get some pictures of divers within these slate tunnels moving about. So, so I've pulled the gear out pretty much as I had it, as I was using it on last Monday. Um, oh, it's got, I think it's got some some quite interesting stuff on it. But, but broadly speaking, um, I'm like like you, Alex. I'm shooting Nikon. Um, I'm shooting two Nikon cameras. Um, I'm shooting the the D850, which I think we discussed at reasonable length with you. Um, and then the D500, um, and the D500 is is a crop sensor, um, 24 megapixel, I think, camera. Um, I think it's 20, actually. Right, okay. I was corrected, 20. Well, it's got megapixels. Same in it. I know as the that D5 much. and D6. Yeah, um, and, um, and it... Um, but the camera I was using, because it was uh, anticipated very low light, I actually was using the D850 on Monday. Um, and... Um, obviously, it's they're wide-angle shots in, in limited visibility and in darkness. So, so the tool that I use out of choice, I'm just going to pick it up here. It's quite a lump. Um, is this beast? Um, uh, a bit further back, yeah. There we go. Which is um, a Nauticam WACP one, um, and this is mounted on my uh, on my C cam D850 housing. Um, it looks really nice on the C cam. Yeah. What I, is the, the adapter, what adapter are you using? It's it's a Saga adapter. Saga built the adapter for me, um, and it just literally just screws in onto the the um, C cam um, fitting, and then bayonets onto the Nauticam side. Um, oh, that's I, nice. Yeah, I, I've not got my one was um, is a generic one. Yeah. It's made by Saga, but it's not not made specifically for the WACP. Yeah. And actually looking at that, and so I can't use the buoyancy collars. Yeah. I have to use my own buoyancy collars, which I don't really mind, but it's, yours looks really neat. So it's designed, this is this is the the, the lens um, that it's, I'm using it with, which is a, a, a legacy Nikon 28-70. Um, and the 28-70, uh, obviously the, the, the port is designed for that, this lens. So, so I mean, I could add extensions to it, Nauticam extensions to it would work fine, but basically it's designed for this lens. So, so I don't need to add any extensions as it stands, it fits straight in, which is nice too. Um, obviously, when, when you use it with the Nauticam system, you need to add an extension in for that lens. So for this one, the, the extension yeah. and the adapter is all in one, um, which is that, really nice. That's because also there's an old AFD 28 mil prime. Yeah. That Nauticam also wanted to make possible with that with the WACP one, yeah. and so that's and, and that's shorter than the twenty eight seventy physically. Yeah. So that's why yeah you need that's why. But I it, there was for me there was when I was testing the WACP one, we were play, I Nauticam lent me a twenty eight mil, and it was great. But you just never ever wanted to limit yourself to a prime because yeah. the image quality was so good with the zoom. Yeah. Well, I, I found that with the, with the combination, this combination, for example, even with things like whale sharks, um, I can actually, I can zoom in in clear water. I can zoom in when the whale shark is approaching and literally just zoom it out as it, com as it comes in. So it's actually a really, really versatile focal length with this setup. Um, mm. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a flattering focal length, isn't it? Yes, it's not it. so wide that it makes everything, you know, super yeah. bendy, super fishy. Yeah. Um, yet is 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 a it really is an ultra wide angle lens. Yeah. And I, I was using I did some sh shots for um for one of the training agencies um on rebreather training. It's really nasty conditions. I mean, it was the viz was probably less than two meters, um, and. And it was very dark too. And and to be honest, you know, with any conventional dome port lens combination, you simply weren't going to get those pictures, um, just because you know I was at f four or something, um, mm. and and that's what the aperture that I needed just simply to, to manage to get. I was still at ISO two thousand or something, 
Um, and it's, so, so for those kind of challenging conditions, this lens combination is really good. Um, yeah, really it's good. another. Yeah, it's it's really nice. Um, yeah, I really like it. Anyway, um, let's see some of the other gear. So, um, yeah. So on that camera, I'm going to take it. I I was using. So um, this is a Seacam 60D. Um, it's a small strobe. It's powered by um, just very simply by four double A's. So um, and um, in common with all the Seacam names, it's the 60 relates to its watt seconds. So it's not a very powerful strobe. And, and I'm a huge believer that in challenging water conditions, what we really need to do is control where the light's falling, not use lots of it. So would you say about the same power as sort of an, an in on Z240? I think probably a little bit less, particularly. Um, and one of the things I really like about it is it's got the circular flash tube. So, so I actually think that the quality of light this produces, albeit it doesn't produce a lot of light, is really nice. Um, it's a really quite, quite soft, um, nicely colored, nice color temperature light. So, so it's low power um, and, and hence makes it ideal for more challenging conditions. It will be really good on, on macro sites where there's muck sites with the sand and stuff in the water as well. Um, for anything. The form factor is, um, not absolutely ideal for macro because it doesn't fit in alongside a macro port unless you've got a very long macro port. So you do have to angle it in towards the towards the um, towards the subject slightly. But but that apart, I think it triggers with fiber optic or with the S six cables. Um, so I, I but I find it really really nice for challenging visibility conditions. Um, and so so in these caves, this was the camera that was on the strobe. Sorry, this was the strobe that was on the camera. Um, and this is what I was using to light up the diver in the foreground. Um, and then in a minute, we'll come to, I was using a remote strobe to try and light up the, the diver behind him in, in this tunnel. So, um, so okay. yeah, I, I, I do actually, I, I'm a big believer, actually, if I've got, you know, say two pairs of strobes and I want an off camera strobe, I'll generally always want the best, biggest, power, most powerful strobe off camera. Yeah. And, you know, because in that situation, you really want that usually to dominate things. And because that strobe is in the picture, it needs to be as wide as possible to actually have an impact. If you use a, a small strobe, I think most people make the mistake when they're working with off-camera strobes, is to put their big strobes on their camera and then put some small spare strobes off-camera. And much better the other way around if you're doing off-camera stuff. I actually think as well, because of the, the distance, sometimes you, you really do need... I mean the settings as well, and the fact that the camera is that the, the strobe is off camera means that issues of backscatter largely disappear. Um, mm. So you can afford to turn that strobe up, um, whereas the one on the camera you can be really, really careful about both its position and its um, and its power in order not to light up all the all the rubbish in the water. So how are you mounting and triggering that that off camera strobe? All right, so I have a really clever gadget. This is this was the off-camera strobe. This is a an Inon Z330. Um, they are very powerful. They're very mm. wide. Um, yeah. So so they produce a very wide, powerful beam. Um, again, um, but most people probably be familiar with these. But again, just powered by AA battery by four AA batteries. Um, and what I've done is is I had this mounted. This is a um, a device made by Hedwig Deere. It's a WebPixel member. Um, and um, essentially, it's this is magnetic, so um, it, it sticks onto a steel tank. It's a strong magnet, um, and then obviously you can position the strobe however you want it to be positioned with the ball clamp, like so. So it's literally just mounts. Now the diver that I mounted to had side mount tanks, so so literally just sat on his on the back of his side mount tank uh, and pointed backwards towards the third diver in the party. Um, um, and it's a really good solution. It does have slots, so you can add a cam band if you want to to, to attach it to a, um, to a, an aluminium cylinder, for example. Um, but in this case, he had steel cylinders actually, so it just just mounts straight on the on the, on the cylinders. Um, and that's triggered. I've just got a normal fiber optic cable here, and what I have here is an anglerfish and remote trigger. Um, it just produces it uses the optical it uses the, the the primary flash the camera mounted flash just to trigger an optical signal that travels down the fiber optic cable and triggers the strobe and, and you've probably got a bruise on your hand as well <laughs> I probably I like everybody has an yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's a, bruise a funny bruise on the back of your hand here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've actually got the hang of them um but, oh, all right, there, there has to be someone who has. I know I, I can I can do it in my sleep, yeah. <laughs> but um, but they're actually really reliable. Um, and again, um, the advantage to them is that that you can trigger them using an optical 
um, yeah. cable, which, as far as I know, they're the only ones. The majority of, of the of the remote triggers are um, are use and wired can... connections. Um, yeah, and... yeah, basically because you need to put a battery in to make it run, and yeah. I think most people don't want to put a battery in them. Yeah. yeah, I wish they put a switch on it though. I just don't, you know. Why not have a switch? You yeah, know, yeah. the process. <laughs> you, you've got all the other clever electronics, the, and the, the process is tap once, two blues, tap, tap. There you are. It's on. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. <laughs> I've got, I've got um, one that someone gave me because they were so fed up with it. So I have one. Yeah, yeah. I think they are. Um, they can be frustrating, but mm -hmm. but um, in terms of in terms of their performance, they actually work really really well. So. So, I think so, also if you use it all the time, you'll be completely on top of the switching exactly, on. I'm only yeah. being slightly um, yeah, yeah, yeah. naughty by suggesting those, those things. Just, <laughs> it is the thing that everyone says about them, is that they you, you end up with this bruised hand from bashing the bloody thing up and down. <laughs> down and off. The, the, um, so that was the setup that I was diving on on Monday. Um, and, um, I, you know, I, and I think for, for that particular usage, it was a really good... Um, combination of i mean the camera obviously the low light performance the d850 is very good um the the strobes were right maximum were the, were the best ones i could really get hold of for um for challenging water conditions um obviously off camera strobe and using the the, the d850 with the wacp combination that sort of is is i think i, I, I think is a, a better combination obviously you could have gone with an rs or a fisheye um if you wanted the fisheye look but generally because the tunnel is kind of tunnel shapes um i quite wanted the idea of a kind of relatively straight lines in it so and the ability to open the aperture up in those difficult yeah. conditions is really important i think it's it's really interesting seeing someone like you who's got all this gear yeah and actually has the ability to choose strobes and lenses and camera yeah. very specifically for a shoot because yeah. obviously the majority of underwater photographers have one camera, one pair of strobes, and that's it. Yep. And I think it does make the point that there is no perfect camera, there is no perfect strobes. They all have, there's no perfect lens. They all have different, and, and the same with dome points as well. Yep. They all have different strengths and weaknesses. Yep. And if you are if you have more, you know a big selection of gear, you do have the ability to to hone that gear in terms of the setup you put together yep. for the types of shots you're, you're, you're shooting and the challenges of that, that shoot. And I think it, it does, you know, people always, the question I always ask, oh, you know, what is, is the perfect gear? And I think the more you learn about underwater photography, the more you realize that different setups have different different things they're particularly good at. And I think one thing you can do as a, a photographer, if you've only got one setup, is to understand what your gear is really good at that other people's gear maybe isn't so good at. And if you focus on that type of photography, you'll be able to make your work stand out a little bit. And something else I think we, we mentioned when we were talking about some of the tips for underwater photographers that we, in one of the earlier episodes, it, try and get together with other people that you can pool equipment and share equipment. Um, because oftentimes, um, you know, it, this stuff is expensive. Um, and, you know, not everyone will be using a particular tool for a particular job all the time. So by being able to share it out, I think that's a really good um, so make friends, basically. Make friends, yeah, make yeah, friends with people who have lots of gear. The, the <laughs> at the weekend, I, I did use it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyway, that was really interesting, Adam. Thanks a lot. I thought I'd mention as well that what I have oh, okay. here. Um, this is uh, this is the D500 housing, um, and with a little um, compact port on it. Um, and and I don't. The, my reason for mentioning it really is that. Despite the fact that I've spoken about the D850, my favourite underwater camera is not the D850, it's actually the D500. Um, and I think we're going to do another episode about um, uh, crop sensor versus full frame sensor cameras um, and the pros and cons of them. But personally, my favourite, and, and, and again, it's tools for job. You know, if you're taking me somewhere wide angle specific, take me to Roger Rampart. D850 every time. Save all this for tomorrow, Adam. Come on, you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're okay. going to do, do tomorrow's episode today. <laughs> I am, yeah. But I thought I'd mention, I thought I'd mention that, get that in, in that, in that this is one of the differences possibly between between your setup and mine, Alex. Is, is that out of out of preference, I would probably shoot normally with a D500, um, and um, obviously for the specific thing I was doing on Monday, it wasn't necessarily the best tool for the job. But in general, my my go-to underwater camera is actually a D500. So. Yeah, anyway, worth worth mentioning, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, so so that's really it from me for the moment. Um, I I don't know if you have you got any more questions, Alex. No, I think that was that was really interesting. 
Um, so um, where can they see more of your work, Alex? Where can people watching this see more? Um, I think the best place to? to keep an eye on what I'm up to is on Instagram at alexmustard1. But you can find me on lots of different social medias. I'm, I'm on Twitter as Alex underscore mustard. Gosh. I'm on Facebook as well. But yeah, Instagram is the best place to see pictures. Brilliant. Okay. Well, um, thanks for that. And I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsor today as well, which has actually been CCAM for today's episode. So thank you very much to CCAM. Um, please feel free to add comments, likes, and make suggestions for any topics you'd like us to go from in future episodes. Thank you very much. And thank, you, thank you for watching. Thank you.